I want you all to think of something that you use every single day. Let's say your car. You drive it everywhere, you drive it to work and school and maybe even on vacations. And you expect it to be efficient, reliable, comfortable and also keep you safe. But have you thought about who makes all of these parts that go into making your car work? Or how are, how are these things designed? Engineers do these things? Engineers are the people who work to make things and solve real world problems. They could be working on making a lightweight, comfortable shoe, or they could be designing the next big roller coaster. But have you ever thought about if all the components that are in your car today, right now, if they've been perfectly designed and if they're the absolute best that they could be? No, right? It requires a team of extremely diverse and creative engineers to come up with new and better designs every single year when cars are released. I'm sure we've all heard about the advantages of diversity. Research has shown that people from different backgrounds work to produce more innovative results because of their own experiences, perspective, um, thought process compared to people from different, from similar backgrounds. Along with a high level of critical thinking, their approach to problems might be very different based on their nationality, race, age. Take, for example, the seat belt in your car. I know you get in, you put it on, you don't even think about it. It's, it's involuntary. But we expect it to keep us safe, right? Well, it turns out that women are 47% more likely to have a serious injury in the case of a car crash. Why? Because they used male dummy drivers for all of their crash tests and came up with a seatbelt design that worked best with those dimensions. And only in the year 2011 did they introduce the female dummy. The male engineers that designed these seatbelts Perhaps it had never occurred to them that people unlike themselves might experience their designs very differently. And in a situation like this, wouldn't you think that a more diverse group of people would be able to come up with a better design for a seatbelt that worked with people of all shapes and sizes? I think they would. So what I'm really trying to say here is 49.6% of the world's population is female but only 20% of all engineering school graduates are women. And of all the engineers that are women in today's world, only 11% are girls. So why don't we have enough women engineers? What is it that deters girls from going into engineering? I think, as a society, we're subconsciously inclined to think of men in careers involving science and technology. Engineering is perceived as a career choice for men, men who want to wear yellow hard hats and build bridges. We lack women engineers and scientists as role models, and young girls today need to see other girls or women just like themselves doing the type of things that they want to do to succeed in life. We think of people like Albert Einstein and Steve Jobs as revolutionary men who've contributed to the world of science and technology. But we forget women like Hedy Lamarr, who developed the basis for modern communication systems, such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and Lillian Gilbert, who contributed to industrial engineering by studying workforce patterns and ergonomics. I hope that we will be able to inspire the next generation and minimize, if not eliminate, the social stigma that exists for girls in STEM. Um, as I was doing a little research for this um, presentation, I came across several articles that claim that women, when it comes to engineering, are at a slight disadvantage. And it's because of something that we overlook all the time, toys. When we think about toys for girls, what are a few things that come to mind? Barbies, dollhouses, Easy Bake Oven, maybe? And what about toys for boys? We think of all the cool stuff, right? The Lego sets, the racetracks, the remote control cars. Well, it turns out that construction sets like Legos can help develop spatial skills, which is the ability to visualize things in three dimensions in the mind's eye. 
and it's a critical skill for engineers. But almost half of the world's population playing with makeup and kitchen sets are being deprived of developing this skill at an early age. As I was growing up, I was lucky enough to have all sorts of toys. I had plenty of Barbie dolls, and I had my own fleet of Hot Wheel cars and Lego sets and remote-controlled airplanes. And those are toys meant for boys, which is not the case for a lot of little girls. They're usually exposed to the toys from the pink aisle. I come from a family of medical doctors and research scientists, and I've always had their encouragement and support to pursue the path of science and technology. But for as long as I can remember, I either wanted to be an astronaut, because what kid doesn't love the idea of getting in a rocket ship and flying up into space, or I wanted to be a research scientist, because that's what my parents are, and I thought it was the coolest job ever. But despite being exposed to all of these opportunities, I guess no one really told me about engineering or what it is that engineers really do. So it never occurred to me as engineering being a potential career path because I had no idea what it was. As I was graduating high school, I knew I wanted to go to college, but I had no idea what I wanted to major in. All I knew was I loved science, I liked building things with my hands, and I wasn't too bad at art. So I sat down with my dad and we were brainstorming on what I should pick as my major. And he told me, I think you should go into engineering. I think you'd really enjoy it. And at this point, I pictured myself driving a train. <laughs> because I didn't know what engineering was. I didn't understand why he wanted me to drive trains. They made me sick. But that's when he told me that with engineering, I would learn how things are made. I could learn how my iPod works and how planes fly. And maybe someday, I could be a part of making some really cool things. I've realized that the term engineering is often misunderstood to be this mundane job for people to fix broken things. But in fact, it really is a vast and creative field and is extremely important in society. When we think of the word creative, we think of drawings and paintings and sculptures, but we rarely think about manufacturing. Yet, manufacturing is one of the original forms of creation, and we have manufactured goods all around us that we use every day, including the chair you're currently sitting on. I know we don't think about this a lot, but engineers really are part artist, part inventor, part scientist, part architect, part mathematician, part creative thinker, and there's so many more parts to them. They're responsible for designing space shuttles and trying to find ways to protect the environment from pollution. They're not just limited to building machines. There are toy engineers who come up with new toys every day, and then there are engineers who work with special effects that go into movies, and there are also food engineers who come up with better tasting ice cream. So after I graduated with my degree in electrical engineering, I knew I wanted to try my hand at something a little different, maybe broaden my horizons. So I applied for graduate school here at Florida State, and, and today I work with things that are very different from what I could have possibly imagined. Raise your hand if you know what a 3D printer is. That's a lot of people. <laughs> I'm sure most of you have seen a 3D printer in person, printing really cool structures. And if you didn't already know, 3D printing kind of works like a hot glue gun. You put a solid plastic material in, and there's a heater that melts this material, and it comes out of a nozzle, and you print structures layer by layer. And these structures could be anything that you could think of. So 3D printing can be used with a variety of materials to print various types of objects. It's often misunderstood that 3D printing is just for making little trinkets and prototypes and mock-ups, things that we don't really need. But 3D printing can really be used to make functional objects. And with the right choice of materials, it can also be used for advanced applications. I'm sure you've heard of all the people who have 3D printed prosthetics for kids with disabilities or 3D printers that are able to build houses in less than 24 hours. And there are people who are making jewelry with 3D printers, and some people are even printing chocolate. In fact, I use 3D printers for my research 
where I develop a process where I use 3D printing to make structures that can go on airplanes that are lightweight but also have the added functionality of being resistant to lightning strikes. So remember what I said earlier about girls having a, dis a disadvantage of not having developed spatial skills? I think 3D printing could be the answer to that. We've all played around with Microsoft Paint as we were growing up. If we took that another step further and encouraged today's generation to learn to draw in 3D, I think that could make a world of difference. You see, kids could draw their structure in the software, print it out on a 3D printer, and then compare this physical object to their drawing to truly see things in perspective. 3D printing software for kids already exists, and so do 3D printers. We just have to make sure that people are aware of the existence of these technologies and the advantages of introducing them early enough in a child's life, because that's when they're the most impressionable, and the types of technologies you expose them to can really affect their career choices in the future. Teaching high school kids about engineering concepts might be a little too late, because by then, they might have already made up their mind on their choice of career or whatever they're passionate about. 3D printing can also be used to in incorporate the understanding of manufacturing and design processes. We don't often think about how the roads are made or how buildings are built, because they've always kind of been there. We don't think about how they're manufactured. When I was a kid, I thought things just magically appeared at the store. So today's generation of middle and high school students already have access to this technology, either in the form of a classroom curriculum or maybe as an after-school activity, and they get hands-on experience. You might even have a sibling or a niece or a nephew that has access to this technology. And if there are underprivileged or underfunded schools that don't have 3D printing in their curriculum, I urge you to encourage them and support them. Thus, I encourage all of you to go and learn about the vast applications that 3D printing has to offer and encourage others to do so as well. We should continue encouraging the importance of different experiences in younger generations to facilitate their creativity and discovery instead of restricting them to old social norms. And in doing so, they can improve their confidence and possibly choose engineering as a career path in the future because they will already have the skill sets that they need to succeed. And so in doing this, we can develop a, a lot more diverse and better workforce for the future. So when you leave from here today, I want you to think, instead of stepping into a car that drives on the road with four wheels, you might be sitting in a car in, that flies in the air or maybe even a teleportation device. But that, uh, that depends on the steps you take today, and that's what's going to affect the future. Thank you.